Now, I know what you're thinking. Is it all this mathematical R cross P? It's just a bunch of simple tricks and nonsense, right? You need an intuitive way to think about this. How do I intuitively think about a mass translating having angular momentum? So we're going to give you another way to think about it based on circular motion. We can think of this translational motion as circular, and maybe that will make it more real. Here we go. Same system we keep doing. Here's the disk. Um, it's at height h, which I'll write over here just to keep it out of the way. It's moving over at mv. It's translating with momentum p equals mv. And we're going to think around the origin right here, of course. So what we're going to say is this is just the moment in time it was captured in actual circular motion that looks something like that. Because if it's just a moment in time, you can't distinguish the two from each other, translational or circular. If we did that, we could go back. We call this position 1. We could go back and say L1 equals I omega. We could use our I omega definition rather than our R cross P. Because for a simple mass going around a circle, what is its moment of inertia? M R squared. So it has mass M. And R is H. Right? So M times H squared. And then if it's moving at V, what is its angular velocity? It's V over the radius. So V over H. V over H, and look at that, those cancel, and we get what we keep getting, HMV. There you go. So if you think of this as going right by the origin in circular motion, you're all set. You're never satisfied. But you want to know, what? That, I was fine with that. I want to know when it's over here, how do I think about it? When it's not right across perpendicular to the axis, right? MV. So I'm going to show you, you can do the exact same thing. Let's call that position two. All right, position two right here. And it's also, we can pretend that's a little piece of circular motion. Now, it's not moving perpendicular. It's not really moving that way. But we can say, well, that component is in circular motion. Right? Why not? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, let's define an angle. Make sure I put it on the right side. We want it here, theta. And let's see if we can get I omega, the moment times omega, if that's kind of like being in circular motion. Okay. The moment is mr squared. The mass times the radius squared. The radius is the hypotenuse of this triangle. But to avoid getting d involved, we're just going to do it with h and that theta. So this hypotenuse is h over sine theta. Right. h over sine theta squared. So there's mr squared. There's your moment of inertia. Now we need omega. Now omega is the velocity over the radius. Uh, let's see, the velocity, though, it's the velocity going along the circle. So we actually have to break this v up into a component going um, along the circle and perpendicular to the circle. I drew that a little too large. So this would be theta also. So the sine of that would be uh, this component. All right, so this is the one over here. It's the sine. The cosine would be the radial version. We want the tangential version, the sine. So we want the v, the velocity over the radius. The velocity is h sine theta. Um, right? I'm sorry. The velocity. The velocity is v sine theta. V sine theta. Right? And then h was what? I'm sorry. The radius was h over sine theta just like it was here. But it goes in the bottom, h over sine theta. OK. And then we see these sine thetas cancel that sine theta. And then this h cancels one of these h's. And we just have hmv. Same thing. And I did that as a function of angle, because now for anywhere you go, we didn't do it a specific d. We did it for any angle, anywhere you go. It's going to be HMV. Make that angle whatever you want. It's going to cancel out. So the way to think of it is, when you're really far away, the radius makes your angular momentum tend to be really big. But the component of your velocity around a circle that's really big isn't very big. Right? Most of your, if you go far away, most of your velocity becomes radial, not tangential. As you get closer, more and more of your velocity is tangential. And of course, your radius vector shrinks. And then it grows again. And so this whole process the angular momentum stays constant, HMV. 
So you'll see this in books a lot, written probably as RMV. The angular momentum of a particle going by an axis is RMV. Here we've been calling it H, or MVR. You might see it written MVR. That's, all, that's really all that's going on.